What's up, everyone? War of I-4 showdown here. Bay Hill, hole number one, rookie division here. This is going to be a semifinal 18-hole round. Also keep in mind, for your finals round, it's also going to be this setup as well. So that's what's nice about this most recent setup. And we're going to do a little bit of mixed bag. So I'll do a little bit of everything. Um, for this one specifically, why don't we go Mojave? A lot of people down in rookie towards vet. Also keep in mind, you know, if you're vet, if you're amateur, this this guide, it's still going to be the same wind directions. So very, very similar tournament setup for you either way. So let me just go back here, try to get my bag set up. Take a look at my bag first off. Two, four, six, four, five. Is that the one? Yeah. So here is the bag. Eight, eight miles per hour. It's about four rings. That's more or less what we'll do. And we're going to go to blast this one. I'm just going to push straight up. Apply as much left curl as possible. Also be careful on your ultimate shots. It's really the only way that you're probably going to hold a fairway is hitting an ultimate shot. So you do want to be very cautious with that. What I recommend for this hole is just blasting it down there as far as possible and trying to take your best shot at a wedge. Um, and if you guys haven't already seen, you know, I've scaled these out. So I'm just going to kind of toggle my grid. This is essentially what the entire span. So if I switch my screen to this view, this is essentially the entire span for this club. So in here you see, there's the max right there. So we're just going to size this up and just see how far this is in the span. I think, is this a five? Is this, do I have it on the nine or the five? It says it's five. Must be a basic ball span. Let me just go ahead and stretch this out. Let me just show you guys how to do that. Cause I'm gonna use power. I, yeah, I think cause this is power zero. So this was my power zero version. So I'm just going to go in here and edit, and I just want to show you how easy this is to just stretch out. So if we're going Mojave ball, you know, I just want to show you how many pigments it is. All we're going to do is just shift this to the right real quick. A couple taps there, close it down, maybe a couple more. There's a couple more tick marks, somewhere right around here. Just to show you guys what it looks like. Hit the wrong button there, my bad. But there you can see that's about full span. So we'll just go down and save that. And then we'll go to this one. And we'll stretch this one out to the same scale. And this will be for 100% power seven balls. So we'll just go ahead and rename this P7, just so I know that's my scale for this. And the other thing that I can do is I can save a P7 and then, you know, I can create a copy just like that, just by hitting the copy button. And then I can go edit this one and condense this one back down for a P0. We're not going to do that right now, but just wanted to show you this is kind of where we're talking about. So I just wanted to show you guys how to get that set up super easily. And let's just, for the sake of argument, say, and this is right around three, three and a half rings for max. And we'll just set up three and a half rings for max. And then other than that, all we're going to do is just take and estimate our percentage, which it looks like about 93. 93%. Percent. 
Let's just go in here. Do power seven ball. 93%. Eat three. Is 588. Eight. So that's more or less what we're going to do for our ring count here is 588. Eight. Let's just see how good we can get with that setup. And th these are the type of concepts that you just want to try to improve upon as you develop into better and better players. You'll just fine tune just a little bit more. And with that one, just a little bit light. So maybe 93. A little bit light there. So we'll have to tinker around with that a little bit, but uh, you get the idea of what we're trying to do. Um, let me just make sure on my screen here. Double check. Yeah, no pin. Just a little bit light on that pull there. For some reason, and I'm not sure entirely why. But let's just keep rolling along. And we'll try to give you guys the best starting points as we can. So for this one, we're going to use two side spin, two right spin. Set up pretty aggressive. And as you can see, this was maybe four rings from max, give or take. And here's where you're going to get into a little bit of a situation that you have to worry about, which is making sure that the ball guide and that you don't run out of space here. So you can see what I'm doing with my ball guide there. And this is just about 2.1 rings from the pin here. So this is just giving you like an initial setup. So for 2.1 rings, And we're just going to call this, you know, four rings for max. At four rings for max, we're going to be pulling exactly to max. So you got to make sure that you stay within bounds on these shots. And you can see I just do that. But keep in mind that it's right back here, very close to this line. So you got to be careful. And we took off just a little bit of that backspin to make sure that we stayed in range. So make sure that you're doing similar. And as a result, you can see there it is, a hole-in-one with Mojave ball. So very easy for you guys to get your alignment, utilize my guide, utilize the practice pins if you just want to take a, a, a look at it if you're a little unsure about the setup. So that's what, you know, is nice about that practice is just being able to have that extra look. So when we get to a hole like this, we're just gonna utilize a little bit shorter club. And the way that I've been doing this is super short off the tee deck. So if I do eight six here, it's saying six rings. We're just gonna make sure that we're six rings in the fairway at least. Getting as much backspin as we can. And this is just kind of the spot that I've been putting it to be able to get myself a look at a lightning rod shot. I am more of a lightning rod player than a Bigfoot player. Now I'll do Bigfoot. Um, we're going to do a little bit of mixed bag of both. Anytime that I get in a situation where I'm still within range, we're going to try to utilize lightning rod, even at a two. You know, I still like to use it. And if that's the max line, here's five for max. Here's six, seven for max, give or take. Eight, six. I'm just going to switch to this real quick. Somewhere right around here. This is saying 10 rings. I'm not going to be able to go 10 rings. That's the problem. So we're going to have to set up down here. We just take off a little bit of that spin. 
keep that ball guide stretched out and that's what you can see I'm doing there so with h6 the only thing that you're going to see especially on these large ring adjustments you're going to see I'm offsetting that guide just a little bit so you can see my arrow is just slightly pointed to the left it's going to help pull this more north and less so this is like a more north pull and less west pull it's because this is such a headwind that we're offsetting that slight little bit. The more that the wind is intense, the more, and you can see that's why we're missing to the left. It's because we didn't quite adjust our pull angle in enough. So you can see our weight, we wound up just west of the hole. Anytime that, anytime that you see that happen, that means the intensity of the amount of rings you went was fine. You just went too much to the west direction. So the correction for that is to just tilt that needle ever so more gently than I did there. Also keep in mind, you know, the smaller that you get that wind, so if you're using the premium balls, the less and less you have to offset that guy to the side. here for this one we're just going to blast this up here making sure to hit our ultimate shot so do slow down if you're not very good with the uh, ultimate shot timing it's going to be a very crucial part is hitting that ultimate shot and here this is probably a good time to get back on Bigfoot Let's just see if Bigfoot's even in, in range here. Oh, we're on short iron anyway. But what this is going to allow, let me just hop back in, get back on the sub. Sorry, my uh, cut just is a little bit tough to use. But here you can see we're going to be very close to the max distance line. It's saying right around 5'8", more or less. So 5'8", is the ring adjustment. You're also going to see that we're going to try to land this very, very short, but making sure, if we can, that we still land on this green. So at 5'8", you see where I'm set up? We're still going to pull the 5'8 rings. Now the only thing I'm a little worried about is after this pull, we pulled down off the green now. So you can see down off the green, I think this is gonna just land just a little bit short on us. So in order to restate that distance, what I'm gonna do is restretch out the target just to make sure that we don't land on the fairway. That's the last thing you wanna do here is make this short land. So I'm just pushing up, you know, 0.2 of a ring, just enough to hope that we don't land on this fairway. It's very important, and it, that was very, very close. It looks like I hit the fairway, so just barely, and that's why it's stretched out this far. So that's what you want to try to avoid. And also, if you can get that wind down on that second shot, you know, if the better balls that you use, the easier that wind is down, the easier that you can get that ball close. So do keep that in mind for that hole. And let's just keep rolling here. And, you know, like I mentioned in my other guide, if you guys saw my qualifier, this is a great hole to get, you know, take advantage of risking it a little bit more. So we're going to go high flight. I'm going to try to land up here. And you can see where, where I am with my initial alignment. This is right in the center of this grid. So right in the center of this green grid. And let's just use this for my start point. So if I'm right in between, this is saying 4-2. I'm going to go right around what it says. Which is 4-2. After the 4-2, we're just going to push back up to max.
There is my ultimate shot, and let's just see how far this rolls out. And this is where these little sl slight wind tweaks are going to come in. That actually looks pretty good. Oh, yeah, that's real good. So look at that. So if I would have kept that 10 inches from the pin, so that was great. I didn't even need practice. What that tells me is with, and what was that, 8-9? Was that 8-9? Or 9.6, oh no, 9.6, so this is only 8.8, eight. so I'd imagine it's going to come up just a little bit short, but that's what we're going to try to do is we're just going to try to replicate that, so we're going to utilize the same everything here, and it was this grid here, what I'm going to do, 8.8, eight. so this is only 3.9 rings, so in this case, we're going to go 3.9, which is right around here. And the other thing that we're going to do, this is a great time for you to maybe pull out a ball power pin. So this will boost ball power by one. Since the wind's smaller, I'm going to try to get this a little bit farther. So as soon as I equip this, this is going to add just a little bit of ball power. To my shot. And then all we're going to do, straighten this out. And we're going to try to replicate what we just did there. We're going to hit a very similar shot if we can. Keep it in mind, since it's a slightly, slightly smaller win, that's why we're going with that ball power boost. So I want to try to get this up here. And you can see it's coming on the same line. Really, really good chance. You can see very, very aceable. I, I mean, this is just left of the pin. I mean, that is so close to getting an ace. You guys could grab that. You know, that is so close. It just comes down to one little slight tick mark of a, of a change. And potentially you guys can dr drop that shot. So you saw... But that's also going to be great for your tiebreakers. So if you get stuff like that, it's just going to be huge. Huge confident boost for your tiebreakers, everything. Now I do want to kind of mix guides up. So why don't we use one of these cue balls? This is kind of a really good spot to utilize one. To kind of keep this shot in range. We're going to do it right around here. Cut this corner. And you can see how much this slows the needle speed down too. So these, oh, I used the 1%. I should have got rid um, You know, I don't think I needed that 1% boost on this hole. Um, so, you know, reserving those for those times is going to be ideal. Um, but we did utilize that here. Shouldn't change anything. It shouldn't, you know, make anything too difficult for us. Here you'll see. We got Spectre in the way. Anytime you have Spectre in the way, just go ahead and switch to the Orion. It's going to give you more range. You can see with Orion on, now the only thing that I might need to do when I do this is I need to be very cautious when using the app because I need to set this up for these two situations. But this one specifically, in this case, I'm not gonna have a count for this club specifically. Because this seven, this seven ring span, it's only good for when you're not using Orion. So when you're using Spectra, is the only time that's gonna be a seven ring span. So there's 10, this is, 13, I thought that was going to be, I thought that was going to be enough, 14, 15, man, I really thought that was going to be enough, 16, it's like 16 in the span here, so we got to make a modification to our span for this shot here, and then we'll just keep in mind that it's 7, and we'll restore it back, but that's the way that you have to utilize this app, If you can see how far I am from the pin, this is almost right on two rings from the pin. 
If I zoom in here, you can see it's like right just short of two. And we're just going to go with this spot here. Uh, you know what I didn't do is I didn't figure out how far, like that's five, this was eight, nine maybe. We're going to re re-put this right back at the same spot, two rings, just as you guys can see here. It's about eight rings for max here. And we're going to have to increase this span up for this one-time shot. Like I mentioned, we'll, we'll restore it back to seven after I shoot this. So keep in mind when any time that you have a club that needs changed, if this isn't a max club, we need to change those spans. So we're going to do ring divided into tenths here because we're looking for such an obscure amount. You can see what I'm doing with my alignment. We're just going to get this right around there. And since this isn't my usual club for the short iron, I'm going to make sure to change this. But you can see that two, two rings was just a little too aggressive on the ball guide. So you guys can tinker around with that and just kind of offset. So if you have a big foot six, you know, you'd know to put it, you know, maybe two and a quarter rings. I was just a little bit too tight there. But we're just going to go back and I'm going to restore this back to my default. I'll put this right at the 7172 mark. Because I'm going to put my bag back to back to normal on the next hole. It's not it's not typical that I use this Orion, but keep in mind, if you ever get yourself in those spot, you need to be able to flip between the two values. So we're just gonna go back, restore my bag. This is just kind of my default, what I like to use. And we'll switch back to the spider ball. We'll also take this pin off. The other thing that you guys can do, even if you didn't know, you can do the clear pins after each hole, turn that on. So that's what I did. That'll keep you from accidentally doing something. And this might be a great shot to use a high flight on or a Mojave, just for a little bit extra range. As you can see, here's the max line. We gotta make sure we stay within this. So this is about five rings for max, give or take. You can see what I'm doing with my alignment. That might be just a little too aggressive. Let's do 1.6. It's like 1.6 rings from the pin. And let's just try this. So we're gonna switch over to this. We're gonna do somewhere right around here. Five rings, 510. So that's saying 510 for this adjustment. Point one, that's pretty easy to do. It's gonna go just about, you'd see just like a tick mark farther. Let's just see what this looks like. So just a bit heavy on that adjustment. So, you know, this is an easy way for you guys to just kind of come in. So if you see, um, and maybe my wind's more this direction. I don't, yeah, that changes things a bunch. So there you can see it goes to 492. So maybe just a little bit too much tilt with my wind arrow as well. So if you guys can match that up, do it just a little bit better. Very nice opportunity for you to grab an ace on that one. And hopefully you guys can do that and you can get some shots to drop for you. Best of luck there.
we are going to go pretty aggressive here. So as you can see, we have some room. And then this is another opportunity. You know, maybe a 2% boost. And look what that does to my ball guide. Just being able to, and, and this is another really great opportunity for you guys to uti utilize a practice. So don't hesitate to use those practices. If you think it's gonna, especially if you think it's going to increase you, your score by a stroke. Now what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna go the normal, maybe just a little bit beyond normal adjustment. So maybe four or five in this situation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to utilize this curl. We need to make sure that it gets around enough to get back on this fairway. And you can see, see we're utilizing this special pin here. If you guys wanted to go Pro DX, even a chance that you get it up there even just a little bit farther. You can get it up there onto the green. But you can see we got up here aggressive enough. And what I you know hope to do is get up here close enough to this so that this wind doesn't even play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of position this and you can see this is about, you know, on a, on a four, I'm keeping the ball guide this short. I expect it to roll out, but I'm hoping that I'm close enough that this doesn't even play. So let's just give this a, give this a look. We get our ultimate, it's rolling out and sure enough, there it is. If anything, you know, it was still coming in just a little bit hot, so I could have even left it just a little bit shorter. But you can see we're easy, to, you know, we're able to pop that in. And this is the rookie division. We're doing this with very simple balls. And we're just, we're able to take advantage of this course and still put up good rounds. So even if you're a brand new player, it's very easy for you to come over to this game and just start executing immediately. So I'm going to use the same approach here. We're just going to blast this up as far as possible. Just trying to get this to short iron range. I guess I probably shouldn't have. Because the Bigfoot's probably going to be... Might be better. We go back to our Bigfoot, do this again. So we're gonna open it up and do that 16, 17 ring span that we did last time. So if you guys remember, I'm switching back. There's only, you, you can only store one inside the app here. Guide for Ultimate Golf ring app. You can only store one ring span. And if you don't have a max bag, it'll change. So you can see this is real close to this min line here. Oh, it's actually going to be into the min line. We're even going to have to short land this. So we're just going to utilize min here. We'll go all the way down here. This is probably very close to our ring count. But also keep in mind, how far are we through the hole? So this is what you want to do for approximation. So if I say that this is going to roll here, land here, it's going to still roll out. We're going to have to push back probably two and a half rings. So after we do this adjustment, we're going to push back two and a half rings because you can see that it's about two and a half rings long here. So first things first. So we're going to go the four, six, just like so. And we're going to straighten this out and do exactly what I just said. And this is a very critical step when, when, when you get yourself in between clubs like this. So I'm going to pull back. That's about two seven. That's about two seven rings. Let's just see what that does. Great ball. I don't think it registered great. Yeah, my, my timing looks good enough. And you can see it's rolling out very good. We... Very, very aggressive. You could see I was...